Today we'll be looking at DaVinci Resolve 20.2 Cinematic Haze Effect with tracking shots. In our previous video we looked at a static shot but this time we're going to be looking at tracking shots, particularly car tracking shots and how it actually affects and works with these type of shots. Is it usable? Is it not usable? Let's head into DaVinci Resolve and find out. We have this really nice tracking shot in the night time of this really nice Mark IV Supra and we have the cinematic haze that I already have applied here so we have a before and an after and you can see how much of a difference it kind of makes so the more I'm using the cinematic haze the more I'm being amazed at its capabilities but I'm just going to get rid of this now we can start from scratch so I'm going to come over to over here I'm just going to make a new node right here and I'm going to come over to my effects and you're going to basically you're going to type in cinematic haze and bring this in remember you need DaVinci Resolve 20.2 and you need the studio version of DaVinci Resolve to be able to utilize this. And already we have this amazing before and an after. It's giving very need for speed underground type of vibes, which is kind of awesome to be honest. And already I don't really need to do too much to this. Here we have the car and you can press depth map preview and you can see where the fog is going to be affecting. If it's affecting too much of the car, which is like close to the camera, we can affect the near limit, which is basically things closest. So you can bring this down, it'll push the haze like backwards, as you can see here. Um, but we kind of want it, I mean, you can bring it in really heavily to close towards the camera, but I just want to bring it just a little bit further behind the Supra like this. You want maybe a little bit to kind of interfere with the car um, as it kind of helps to kind of blend things in somewhat. And then you have the gamma, which is kind of like the strength of the density for the beginning. But I prefer using the air light and the density slider uh, down here. So we're going to come over to atmospheric scattering and we can increase this. And this is kind of brighten out the density that we have here and it kind of like this and then you can have the density which is basically how thick the fog is and this is looking really nice so if you're wanting like a really heavy night scene like this this is looking really really nice but the problem with this is that this density this fog is very white but we have this gray that we've applied that's very green uh, so we can actually add color towards this using the colorize and we can shift this color towards a particular color that we wish to kind of move towards and maybe even just a little bit of blue is kind of nice honestly already before and then after it looks like real fog or haze has been applied to this particular scene now we have our light halos here and our light halo threshold will detect like the brightest areas uh, which will basically be like the light areas and you can come over to your brightness and basically if I decrease the size, you can see what the light halos basically do. You'll make a halo of light around the brightest regions of your image, but you can adjust that threshold if you so wish. It'll almost act like a bloom, so I can bring this down or up. It actually looks really good with no light halo, but I can increase the brightness maybe a bit and increase the size. But for now, I'm just going to keep this off because I do really like this really, really clean look. Then we have light rays. One of you asked me in the previous video, like, do the light rays track? And basically, because you're using depth map, light rays will essentially work with, like, shine threshold almost, where whatever's, like, kind of, like, the brightest regions or the region that you've told it to kind of affect, it'll affect those regions. So when, if I was to put this at an angle like this, you can see if I press play, whatever bright it's like, it's like kind of like a glow whatever bright, bright region is being affected by the light ray any new areas that come up will basically then be affected or not affected by if that makes any sense whatsoever obviously this is a little bit crazy and you're not really going to get these type of light flares but this downward kind of light ray is kind of cool and maybe i just want to soften that up to kind of make it a bit more realistic and you can decrease the lengthening uh downwards and i'll just bring the brightness down but just ever so slightly maybe even a little bit of an angle like this. This is looking really nice. Already we have a before and an after, and this is looking really good. I'm just gonna increase saturation as it will add the saturation of whatever colors are in the current background and just bring those up a little bit more, just so those light rays are not white. So this is looking pretty nice. Next, we do have air disturbance, which is over here. Within air disturbance, this is where it kind of looks a bit more smoky rather than looking more hazy. Uh, and hence you'll be able to see like all the smoke particles and stuff and it can move as well. You can get it to move. However, because this is a moving shot and you're adding air disturbance, the air disturbance almost acts in a 2D plane, whereas we're working in a 3D plane. Therefore, when I do press play, 
it just kind of looks a little bit off. It's like a static frame almost. Um, so for this type of shot, it won't actually work. But for a static shot, when you're in a room with maybe some light rays coming in and you can add some air disturbance in that particular type of shot. But for here, it's not really gonna work, but you can adjust your scaling and you can see kind of the type of effect that it's creating here. But again, if I was to press play, you can see that these particles are not really being affected and it just kind of looks weird. And you can adjust like, the flow speed and how like fast it kind of changes speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, you can see here, even with like the not so good playback, that it just looks weird. So it's going to turn the disturbance off, and I think this is like really, really nice. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm happy with the fog that we've created or the haze that we've created, but actually now I want to darken that area um, of the image. So I'm just going to come up, create a power window here, bring this down like this. I'm just going to bring this here and then I'm just going to start darkening this region. I can do this within the uh, cinematic haze in itself, but I prefer doing this like this. And you can see as I bring it down, we're really creating this effect. And I can then use my qualifier to then make sure that the darker regions, which is like the car, are not being affected as much. So I can just create a high softness like this. And you can see a before and an after, and it's looking pretty dandy. And then you can add some more color if you so wish uh, from there. Alternatively, we can make another node, and then we can add color to the overall clip. Now we have this really nice nighttime need for speed look, so before and an after, just with that color. Or with these three particular nodes that we've just added to this particular grid, we have a before and an after, and a before and an after, and honestly, I'm in awe at how crazy this kind of looks. Now, when I do press play, something that I have just noticed is that if you're looking at the spoiler at the back and the roof, and even these windows, we have a little bit of artifact going on, which isn't ideal. But what you can do is come over to the quality and ensure first that this is going to better. The spoiler is falling into the same darkness as, well, the same luminous values, like blended into the background. It's very hard for DaVinci and probably the AI system that it's utilizing to kind of create that fog in a nice way. So if you're having problems with this type of stuff, you can come in and adjust your strength of everything. And this is very, very, if there isn't good separation between your main subject and the background, which we don't have in this case, come over to your advanced depth controls here, go to isolation, and you can then adjust these parameters to kind of your liking. And maybe I can just bring that tolerance up ever so slightly. And you can see it gets rid of a lot of what the flickering and the masking that it kind of did and it gets rid of a lot of that basically which looks really sick um, and this is just super strong now so maybe we actually overall we just bring the overall haze down ever so slightly like this and we bring down density like this actually the density is pretty nice and we still have this really really cool look that we've created i want to add some more contrast now to the overall image like this and then we get this really nice before, well, if I was to click all of these, we have a really nice before and an after, before and an after. And honestly, this is crazy. The fact that DaVinci Resolve is now able to create this type of luck is crazy. And now when I'm pressing, now when I'm playing back, we're not getting those weird artifacts or those blended lines. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this.